there, middle school math teacher. If you are struggling with how to differentiate for the students in your math classroom, this video is for you. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin. I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. We are your one-stop shop for everything you need to teach 6th, 7th, 8th grade and Algebra 1 math. This video is a video that I'm sharing with you of an interview that we did for the Middle School Math Summit that I host every summer. This video is an interview with me and Stephanie Marrero, where she shares all about what differentiation is, the best strategies for students who are more than one grade level, strategies that we can use to differentiate for our students without creating more work, and so much more. I do hope you enjoy. I wanted to share this special video with you who supports me over here on YouTube because this video is super empowering and I wanted to do something just for the YouTube audience. Hope you enjoy. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to the Middle School Math Summit. I'm your host, Kathy Martin, and I am so excited to bring you our interview with the one and only Stephanie Marrero. Stephanie, thank you so much for being part of this event. I am so excited to chat and talk all about differentiation. For those who may not know you, can you share a little bit about yourself and your background as with life as being an educator? Of course. So I have been in, in, in education for about 11 years, working primarily with students with learning disabilities because I'm certified as a special education teacher in New York and also now in Florida. So for the first five years of my career, I taught at a middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade math in a self-contained setting. Um, I learned so much. I loved all of my paraprofessionals. Um, but I needed a little break, right? I got a little burnt out. So then I went to the high school level and taught algebra one, geometry and algebra two, both in self-contained and co-teaching. So I got a feel for that setting. And then recently this past year, me and my family moved down from New Jersey down to Florida to be closer with family. And I got to teach this really cool class called learning strategies. So here in Florida, all students with an IEP have to take a class called learning strategies. And it's all about study skills. So I got to teach um, self-advocacy because all of the students had to have a copy of their IEP and know their goals. Um, we went over time management, organization, note-taking skills. But then I decided to step out of the classroom and be home with my two boys, which has been a blessing, a privilege for sure. Um, so I've definitely worked in different settings, working um, with students with learning disabilities and, and getting to see the best practices that teachers can use for differentiation in different settings. I love that. And as a fellow special education teacher, you as an, a special ed teacher know like the back of your hand, the need for differentiation, the importance of differentiation, but it really doesn't end with special ed kids, right? Like, I mean, really all kids can benefit from differentiation. So before we dive fully into all of my questions that I have for you, can you just share what your def definition of differentiation is so that everyone who is watching, we're all on the same page? Yes, of course. So, so differentiation in a nutshell can be broken apart into three buckets. The first bucket being diverse needs. So whenever students walk into your classroom, right, they're all bringing a different set of unique experiences, strengths, and abilities, right? And it's our job as teachers to really tap into that potential so that students can reach their full potential, right? And the way that we do that is by the second bucket, which is tailored instruction. We want to create personalized learning experiences for our students so that we can customize our teaching to their needs, right? We have some visual learners. We have students that work really well with hands-on activities, right? Everyone has different needs. And the third bucket is maximizing their learning experience. That's what the goal of differentiation is. We want to make sure that we're ma maximizing their learning experience so they get the best chance at being successful. So that's what differentiation is all about. I love that. So, okay. When I hear you say, and I'm sure teachers are thinking it, when when I hear you say, you know, maximizing their potential um, and really diving into all of the diverse needs, I kind of just hear, oh, this is going to take hours of work. 
(laughs) And teachers already do so much. So do you have any strategies on how we can differentiate for our students without creating a ton more work? Okay. So whenever I thought about what things made my life easier as a teacher, the first thing that comes up is the power of routines. So when you think about differentiation, you want to think about it very intentionally and very strategically so that you can create routines around it. The first piece of advice that I would give teachers is you want to get a sense of students' learning gaps where they are. So anything you do as a teacher, you really look at data first. So whether it's giving a baseline assessment or looking at some data that you already have, right? And from there, you want to create a routine around those learning gaps. A lot of times when we hear differentiation or like intervention, we kind of overthink it and we think we need to be doing so many different things, but it needs to be something that's manageable, right? So I would say whether it is a one-on-one instruction or small group instruction, or maybe your school has access to like an adaptive tech program, whether it's iReady, Khan Academy, Delta Math, right? You want to think very strategically about what routine you're going to build around differentiation. So part of the secret to differentiation is consistency and fidelity, right? So if you're going to say, you know what, three times a week for 30 minutes, my students are going to log on to this website and they're going to be working at their level. That is differentiation. You're building a routine around that. Maybe you're deciding, you know what, I'm going to do choice boards, choice boards or math station two times a week. That's part of differentiation. I think sometimes we try to do so many things, right? So it's really about sitting down and saying, you know what, guided notes is what's what's going to work for my students right now, or I'm going to do math stations, or I'm going to do tiered assignments, picking one or two strategies and sticking with it to fidelity is what really helped me at the beginning. I love math stations. I'm actually hosting a whole session during the summit all stations because I've seen the power of stations. I've used stations in my own classroom twice a week, like regularly. So I love that you are also recommending that because It's really, really powerful. Um, Okay, so what are some strategies that, I love all those strategies that you have. And I think it's really important to be consistent versus like you're feeling really excited about whatever it is, guided notes, tiered, you know, tiered instructions, all of the technology pieces. And then life happens, teaching, you know, school happens. And then you're you're off of that, that, the schedule, but it's also okay. Like if you fall off, it's okay to bring it back to like re, you know, reschedulize yourself because I think that's also helpful for us, you know, so that we have a routine therefore our students have a routine. Yeah. Uh, Do you have any strategies uh, for those students who are more than one grade level behind? And I think in the last few years, we're really starting to see students who are more and more behind just given the last few years of school um, and schooling. Yeah, for students who are multiple grade levels behind, these are students that are really going to struggle with accessing the content in itself, right? And that's one of the pillars of differentiation. You can differentiate content, process, or products, right? So I would say start with differentiating the content. And the way you do that is you provide explicit instruction and you provide scaffolding. Now that scaffolding may look and sound differently depending on the student's needs. You have students that do really, really well with visual aids, whether it's um, scaffolded notes, whether it's anchor charts, whether it's whiteboards, right? You have other students that do really well with manipulatives because they're kind of aesthetic learners and they need hands-on support, right? And then you have students that might need everything. They might need explicit modeling, those think out louds. They might need the guided notes in front of them. They might need a graphic organizer. They might need the manipulatives, right? So one thing to keep in mind is when you're providing these scaffolds, um, something that I struggled with my first year was creating a plan of when I'm going to gradually take away those scaffolds as well. I think that's sometimes the missing piece. When do you plan on removing the support when the student becomes proficient enough to to do the work independently without those supports. Um, But for students who are multiple grade levels behind, I would start with really adjusting the content, providing scaffolds, um, visual aids in the graphic organizer, tiering the support, um, visual aids, manipulatives, things like that. So if I'm adjusting the content, where do I even start with that? I would say leveling questions. So as math teachers, you know, different states have different expectations, right? There's some states that you get certified in your actual content area. But if you're a special education teacher and you're like, I'm new to teaching Algebra 1, what does it mean mm-hmm. to scaffold equations, right? You want to take a look at the actual standard and unpack it. 
right? What that means is if the standard said the students need to be able to solve multi-step equations, okay, what are the prerequisite skills to students being able to get to that standard? Okay, they need to be able to distribute on their own. They need to be able to combine like terms. They need to be able to see variables on both sides, right? Once you start unpacking a standard, you're gonna make maybe four to six objectives that are prerequisite skills for that standard, right? Then when you're creating the content, that's how you level it. You may have students that, you know what, they can distribute, but they're not ready to combine like terms. And that's okay. That might be your tier three. Then you have students that know how to distribute, but they have they struggle with combining the like terms. Okay, let's focus on that. And then you have students that have a better grasp of the concepts, but they struggle with variables on both sides, right? So it really starts with you unpacking the standard and thinking about how you're going to level it. What does it mean for level one? What does it mean for level two? What, it mean, what does it mean for level three? And oftentimes that work is best done in a department meeting. Maybe you're not that strong in that content area, but you can work with your general ed um, counterpart or with a department lead or someone. So really just go through the process, 10, 15 minutes, look at the standard, break it apart. What does it mean? Um, that's what helped me at the beginning as well. Are there, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, when you say like level one, two, three, what are the differentiators of where a student is? Is that something that I can find with? Like There's different resources out there and it really depends on the student's need and the state expectations too. So um, one resource that I use is called... Um, Mapping, I think it's called the mapping. It's a vertical alignment um, sheet where you can look at a specific standard and see what does it mean for students to be proficient in ratios and proportions in sixth grade and how does that translate to functions in eighth grade, right? So there's so many websites out there that break down different standards for you. Depending on the school that you work at, your school already might have access to different resources. Your curriculum might already do that for you, right? Now, when it, when it comes to the different levels, that is particular to your classroom. The way that I level my, my class for my self-contained class might look very different than somebody else down the hallway in a general ed classroom, right? So usually when you tier things, right, there's usually three tiers. Level one would be for students who have a basic grasp of the concept, right? Level two might be for students who are on grade level and they struggle with maybe procedural things. And level three would be for students who have a really strong grasp of the concepts and their advance. That's usually what it, where it's at, but I've seen some classrooms where there's four levels or five, you know, it really depends on the need for the students. Okay. You said something really interesting earlier that I would love to go back to. You said that one mistake that people make is not knowing when to pull back on, you know, some of these differentiation pieces how, how do I know? And like, how do I know when a student is quote unquote ready to no longer use whatever thing I'm, you know, helping them with? Um, and how do I know, how do I know when they're ready? And how do I know, like, I'm not removing it too soon? You would need to be very strategic with your checks for understanding, like planning out when you're going to capture data, when you're going to document it, and then what you're going to do with that data. So let's say I'm doing um, interventions for solving equations, right? I give a baseline assessment, it might be 10 questions, right? Then I plan to incorporate some intervention strategies throughout the week, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And on Friday, I check in for, to check in with students to see how they're doing, right? Based on that assessment, I can see where students are at. I would say after two or three assessments that you give students, and it doesn't have to be something long. When some, some people hear assessments, they're like, oh my God, I have to give a, a huge yeah. test. It could literally be four to five questions, just a quick check. After you do that a couple times, you'll see the progress over time. And you could say, well, after a student gets to 75 or 80 percent accuracy, let me take away some of the scaffolds. Right now, that's a conversation that you might have with your co-teacher or with your department where you as the teacher, use your professional judgment and say or look at their IEP goals. Right. And say, when they hit this number, this percentage of accuracy, I am going to take away the scaffold and let's see how they do. Right. But you have to be able to see progress over time to be able to make that decision. And it might be already outlined in their IEP as well. So you might have to look there. How often are you doing these assessments, mini assessments as, as we're going along? 
I mean, you should be progress monitoring if you are a special educator in the room. Even if you're not as a general education teacher, I feel like something that's manageable is once a week to really, I mean, every day that you're teaching, right, either, whether it's an exit ticket or do not question, you're constantly checking for, for understanding. understanding. But yeah. when you are capturing that in real time and documenting it in a way that you have data to look at, and then you can make decisions for reteaching and regrouping and small groups and stuff like that, a minimum of like one time a week. Now we have so many resources now of different apps and different websites that can aggregate the data for us and do the grading for us so that we can just focus on the next steps on how we're gonna use the data. So I would encourage people to lean into resources like Mastery Connect, um, Plickers, Delta Math, different resources where the questions are already embedded and they could be leveled as well and then aggregate the data for you. So then you can look at, okay, this is the data. What can I do with it next? What are the next steps? Do I need to reteach? Do I need a small group? Do we need a one-on-one? -on -one? I love that. I, yeah, I feel like now we've, we have so much more experience with a lot of these technology tools, um, but it's always good to know, you know, I love clickers. Um, but I haven't heard of some of the things that you just mentioned. So, um, that's, that's nice. Um, how, and then a final question, how do we do this for, for people who are not special education teachers who are working with in the general ed population, do you have any suggestions on how we can do this? Like, how do we differentiate without like making kids, any one particular kid feel like they're being, I don't want to say punished, but like, like we're not yeah. them out, you know, like. Don't be scared of the conversation. I think a lot of times um, we underestimate what kids can handle. And it really also starts with your classroom management and the relationships that you've built with students. If I'm sitting down with a teacher and they're telling me that they feel uncomfortable having the conversation, it's because they haven't had an uncomfortable conversation with a student before and they don't have a relationship with that student. So I would say you have to think about how you're building um, connections and community in your classroom, right? How are you talking about mistakes in your classroom? Do you have a growth mindset culture in your classroom? Things like that. Um, because at the heart of everything that you're doing is for the benefit of the student, right? Um, I've taught middle school and high school. I haven't taught elementary. So it might also depend on the cognitive level of students and what they can understand, right? So a lot of times when you ground those conversations, you need to ground it in the fact that we're trying to help the student progress and get better and better and better and make sure that they understand we all start started somewhere. No one's going to be perfect. And frankly, some of my students, they work their ass off for a 70%, right? That 70% is 100% for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think it's a lot of times is doing progress and making sure that we're comparing them to themselves, not to each other. So it really, it really depends on the culture that you have in your classroom. Um, if you if you're feeling uneasy about having that conversation with students, you might need to um, start partnering partnering with other teachers that teach the same group of students and start thinking about well, how can we together conquer this conversation around mistakes and growth mindset and, and progress and things like that? Because it might not just be an isolated one conversation in your math classroom. It might need to be they need to hear it from the English teacher, from the science teacher, from the social studies teacher. It needs to be a part of the culture of the school. Mm -hmm all mm -hmm. when we talk about differentiation because if you're the only teacher that's trying to like push kids and trying to do all this differentiation and no one else at your school is doing it, it might be a little bit more difficult for you yeah I can just see like if I'm pulling a kid if I'm pulling multiple kids like one-on-one -on -one to work with me I can just see some of the other kids mm -hmm. but I, I rephrase like if I'm pulling you let's just say to work with me in the back of the class I can just potentially see you as a student being like, well, why are you singling me out? Or, mm -hmm. You know, why am I like, why do I need extra help? Like, I don't yeah. look like, I don't want to look different, right? Because I think for middle school kids and, and high school, <laughs> you just want to blend. Like, you just don't want to, yeah. you know, like- you And differentiation is something that should be happening across the board. It is a general education teacher's job to differentiate. Now, when we talk about accommodations and modifications, that's the special education teacher and also the general education teacher should, should be providing that as well by law, mm -hmm. but it also depends on the culture of the school. Before I forget, the website is achievethecore.org. 
you can literally plug in, identify any standard and it's going to vertically align it for you. Like if you pick 7EE1, which is like expressions for seventh grade, it'll tell you what the prerequisite skills are for sixth grade, fifth grade, fourth grade, third grade. And then it'll tell you how that seventh grade skill builds them for eighth grade, ninth. Like it's going to vertically align the entire standard for you. So that's a great resource to have. That's awesome. Then you can look to see, okay, like does... Does Tyler understand the, yeah. the fifth grade, the fourth grade? Like, where's that baseline? Then you yeah, can- and it'll give you example questions because I feel like sometimes that's where we're like, oh, I don't, they're below grade level, but where? I'm estimating yeah. it, but this is going to give me a more explicit example of what it looks like. Okay, so achievethecore.org. That's yeah, it's a great resource. Okay, can you, before we wrap up, can you tell us a little bit more about what you've included in our VIP toolkit? And if you are watching and have not upgraded your ticket yet, you're going to want to upgrade for Stephanie's amazing gift because it's awesome. You want to tell us a little bit about So my bonus is all about tiered assignments. So tiered assignments is a great differentiation strategy. What you're doing is you're creating multiple versions of the same assignment, but you're varying the complexity and the difficulty in that assignment. So students are working with the same objective, but they're processing the information at their challenge level, at their ability level, right? So in the toolkit, I um, created a video tutorial where I'm going to walk you through that process of creating a tiered assignment. There is also a template that's in PowerPoint that you can edit. So you can make tiered assignments for do nows, for exit tickets, and for independent practices. And you also get a principal guidebook that you can use to recreate the process as well. That's awesome, Stephanie. I can't wait to dive into that. And actually in our bonus interview coming right up, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into what differentiation actually looks like in the classroom, what resources for us to use, how to do this regularly without complicating things. Um, and you're going to kind of show us how to use these tiered resources in a realistic way. So again, if you haven't upgraded your ticket, you're going to want to do that. Use the button right below this video to upgrade. So Stephanie, thank you so much. Can you tell everyone where we can learn more about you and uh, where we can find you online? So you can follow me on Instagram under the handle Algebra Meets Simple. I also have the same handle on TikTok. You can find more funny videos there. I'm still professional, obviously. <laughs> and um, my website is workshops.algebrameetsimple.com where you can find other resources and other services that I provide there. Awesome. And I know you put out a ton of amazing Instagram content because I, I personally follow you. I don't with the TikTok. So I'm not on there, but I'm sure your content is just as great on TikTok as well. Stephanie, thank you so much. And we will see everyone in our bonus session. Bye.